Next, uh, we're at item number two of the Preservation Department public meeting agenda. Um, this is an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn. Um, docket number 15-7102, block 201, lot 5, 20 Old Fulton Street, in the Fulton Ferry Historic District, a vacant lot with a masonry wall. The application is to construct a new building. And this was last heard at the public hearing of September 30th, 2014. This application before you today is for 20 Old Fulton Street. It's currently an empty lot located in the Fulton Ferry Historic District at the corner of 20 Old Fulton, bounded by Everett Street and Elizabeth Place. It was last presented to the Commission at the public hearing on September 30th, 2014. At that time, the applicant presented a one-story building clad in metal with an exposed concrete base, operable storefront windows, and operable perforated metal awnings. At that time, the Commission expressed a number of concerns with the proposal. The Commission felt that the one-story building felt too temporary and lacked the level of articulation and details that would cause it to relate well to the other buildings within the historic district. There are also questions at the public hearing concerning the materials, how they were being used, how they were integrated into all three facades, and how they related to existing historic building materials within the district. The applicant is back today with a revised design and additional information. The applicant has studied the dimensions and details of existing historic storefronts within the district and used that to revise their design and provided additional details. The concrete base, which was in the original design, has been integrated into the Elizabeth Place and Everett Street elevations. A parapet has been introduced with a metal cornice, um, translucent transom glass with signage behind. The awnings have been revised. They're no longer operable, and they're clad in translucent material instead of perforated metal. And I will introduce the, the building owner and architect are here to further explain their changes and answer any questions. Thank you, Gabriella. We will reopen the hearing. Just uh, Good morning, Commissioners. Tobias Levy, I'm one of the partners uh, developing the property. Um, I'll just go back for a second. This was the one we showed. We agreed uh, with everything the Commission basically said. We, we always felt that it didn't look complete. Um, that it looked very temporary, mostly because of the way the roof came off. It looked more like a, don't be angry at me, it looked more like a shack. There's shake shack across the street because of the way the ceiling, uh, the awning came down. Um, and it also did have, quite, there were a number of questions from you, rightly so, about the materials, about the core tent and the drip from the core tent, what that could do with the sidewalk, as well as the precedent of there being core tent on this street. So we went back to the drawing board and we're going to, in seven minutes, we're going to go through each of the details of how we re remeasured the openings on the street. Um, I'll just say that one of the exercises, uh, and this was always a challenge with the building, was signage. You have very strong signage, Watchtower, um, Eagle Warehouse and Storage Company. Um, the original name of this area was Ferry Market, which dates from the 1620s. It was the market from which the, the ferry left. So we tried to find a way to integrate the signage into the building and make the materials stronger and, as Gabriela said, add a cornice. Um, so to have the market architecture there again, but have it match exactly in dimensions what is across the street and what's next to it. Um, we also attempted to um, give a smooth transition. This was another question from the commission about how um, the concrete wall, which belongs to the neighboring property, transitions into the steel. We tried to address that. Um, it is fundamentally a new building um, from what we presented. Um, and I'm, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Andre Klaas from Snowhead Bay. Thank you, Tobias. I guess our main, Mark Andre Klaas from Slovakia Design, our main changes were very well explained by Tobias and Gabriela, which makes my, um, my task easier. Um, as Tobias mentioned, we took into account the comments of the committee to design a, a better a building and a better project. Uh, we'll go over the, all the changes we made one by one. We think that now the, the design is, is very well balanced and it integrates much, much better in its surrounding. 
This is the other view looking down uh, Old Fulton Street towards Manhattan. I will we'll get back to those images in a few moments. Um, as uh, Tobias mentioned, and, and following some of the committee's comments, we went back to look at the historical context and the, uh, the topological nature of the architecture and the surrounding. Uh, last time, Mary Derricks did an extensive presentation of the neighborhood history and architecture. Uh, we won't redo it uh, right now, but we'll go into some very specific details about it. So when you look at the old historical facades, there's a very, very clear rhythm to all the openings, and this was a very important thing to us. The other thing, as you can see on this image as well, was the presence of signage on the, uh, the old uh, building facades, and also the presence of a lot of awnings, which we will uh, uh, take again in our, in our own project. This is a current view of Old Fulton Street. Our site is on the south side of the street, and that side of the street has been um, cut off from its original uh, uh, expression, ex uh, architectural expression, but you can see on the other side of the street, the buildings remain um, pretty much intact. So we went on the site and we documented the, the, those facades, took uh, measurements. Here you can see the, the collage of the whole uh, building facades and we drew them in a tacad. As you can see, is the first floor of the buildings are characterized by storefront windows and openings. They're all about five feet in width. Almost all of them, they're always around five feet, and then the columns are always around 14 inches in width. Same thing, that's the other building where the Chic Shack is uh, right now. And we took those proportions and integrated it into our new design. So now each of our bays is approximately five feet wide, and each column is now also 14 inches wide, which gives the building, I think, a much more permanent nature than what we had previously. Also, as you can see here, we integrated the, the name of the building, which will be Ferry Market. It's on the upper portion of the building. Uh, I'll get back also to you explaining exactly how that signage worked. And this elevation is, uh, was without the awnings, and this is how it transfers into a more two-dimensional appreciation of the, the facades. All the entrances are set back about 18 inches. Um, and as we go uh, along later, you'll see that all the columns also have a lot of uh, three-dimensionality. So we're looking back at this photo. Um, you can see how in the surroundings the signage are really present. It's kind of a, a tradition in the neighborhood and we're going to do the same thing on, on top of our building. Except that in our case we don't want the sign to be uh, literally too much in your face. We want it to be subtle. Uh, we want also the people to approach the building and discover the sign. Uh, Tobias mentioned also our awnings. We want, uh, we'll, we'll have a translucent fabric that's going to be a light gray and it, it lets the light pass through. So you won't be able to read the letter specifically at night clearly, but you'll see the glow coming from the letters. It's a fabric or a glass? It's, it's fabric. fabric. It's a fabric. It's fabric, yeah. Uh, yeah. As, uh, so as we get near the building, uh, sorry. As we get near the building, we can discover the full details of it. So the columns are now formed of W uh, steel beam sections, so they're 8 inches thick I mean, in, in depth and 14 inches wide. Uh, they'll give a lot more uh, uh, beautiful architectural details to the façade. Um, also at each building ends, the glass goes a little bit higher to acknowledge the, the, uh, the street corners. The regular bay, uh, and multiple windows establish a nice connection with the sidewalk. So each window can open and create a direct connection to the sidewalk. So as I was mentioning, once we get closer to the building, we can read the full ferry market sign on top of the building. We expect that light to bounce on behind the, the awning and lit the street uh, below it. So this is how it works. I, I brought a sample of the glass. It's going to be an acid edge glass. The actual letters, it's made of continuous LED uh, ribbon, and it's, it's going to be a dim light. It's not going to be super, super bright. And the letter is put um, about two inches behind the, the translucent glass so that you cannot read exactly its edges. It's going to create a beautiful glow. 
um, through the glass, and it's it's uh, the sign. You'll be able to read it, but it's it's going to be integrated subtly with the rest of the building, and we, we really love that material as well. It's it's very rich, very beautiful. This is the sign that each tenant will have. It's beside their entrance door, and it's going to be formed by three-dimensional letters. Um, and there's going to be a piece of acrylic that's a little bit set back within the letters, and light will come through the, the acrylic. So this is a rendered elevation of the façade. Uh, here the awnings are not shown, but it's to better appreciate all the, the proportions. So each column, as I was mentioning, are made of W steel beams. They're 14 inches uh, in width. And they also connect to our top cornice, which is also 14 inches in height. And it, the connection of, of cornice and columns really help to frame the whole building. Uh, also, we have a continuous uh, co concrete base to the building. And this one stays, remains at the same height so that we can reveal how the sidewalk actually has a, a slope throughout the whole site. So this is again the view, an up close view. Uh, so the concrete base, actually once we hit the last corner, it goes down a little bit at the level of the, uh, the actual floor to reveal a very high uh, window towards the Brooklyn Bridge. So this is an uh, uh, up close detail of one of the entrance and one of the typical columns. And here what I wanted to show you is where, how the, the, the W beams are positioned. This is the uh, sign for the tenants. It's going to reach all the way, uh, it's going to occupy the whole cavity, but it's only 9 inches in width, so it's much narrower than the, the steel beam. And this is a section, a typical section through the awnings. Uh, what we wanted to... to uh, to describe here is how, how the mechanical equipment will be hidden from the street. I know uh, in our previous design, I think you could see the, the equipment from the street, but now we remediated it. Uh, it's going to be hidden behind our, our, our parapet, uh, and it's impossible to see through it, so it's completely concealed. Uh, you see the height also of the awnings. They, well, because the sidewalk varies, they're between 8 feet and 10 feet in, in height from the sidewalk. And this is, that's the end, uh, a section through one of the entrances, and that's a typical section through uh, a window. And here we wanted to show how the cornice, actually at the top, it has uh, a four inches thick steel plate, half an inch uh, steel plate that is welded to it, so it's, uh, it really represents a simplified uh, uh, cornice that is based on historical precedents. So view from the rooftop, the two corners are occupied by uh, slanted triangular roofs. And all the, the mechanical equipment will come in between the two, uh, hidden from the street and as far away as possible from the, the neighbors. Also from this drawing you see how the, the neighboring concrete wall transfers into our own concrete wall. And it's going to become a ribbon that basically goes around the door and then at the bottom of the building it, it makes a continuous connection to the other side of the building. So if you want our steel structure is, is seated on a concrete base and the concrete makes the connection to the, the neighboring, uh, neighborhood buildings. And this is a view from the rooftop where we uh, position the rooftop units, as I mentioned, as far away as possible from all the neighbors. And I think you, these are all the plans which, uh, if you have any questions, we can go through it, but you have all of them uh, printed. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there questions? Yes. Any, any questions? Roberta? In terms of the color of the base, so the color of the base, as you showed, is the same as all the concrete, right? It's a, it, it, yeah. We want to leave it as a natural concrete color. Okay, because the only thing in terms of the, tr the perspective, it almost looks like it blends into, the, it runs into the sidewalk. So if it was something distinct from the sidewalk. No, it is distinct. Yeah. It's a distinct okay, color. It's, it's a different a, color than the sidewalk? We were aiming for uh, the Rosendale concrete um, color that echoes the Brooklyn Bridge and a number of the historic structures. It's a slightly browner uh, thing to it. I think it's a very uh, good uh, second presentation. Mm -hmm. I think that the changes are really, really make it a really special building. This is good to come to the commission. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It, it gets better, yes. Are there other questions for the, for the applicant at this point? Uh, all right, I just want to note that um, Community Board 2 submitted a resolution and um, they note 
I think there's just a couple of things that I should put forward. One is that um, find this. Okay, the community board too has reviewed and reached a divided determination on the application. And uh, the conclusion is that although the majority of the committee members voted uh, in favor of the application to LBC, there was considerable opposition, and so they encouraged the commissioners to take a hard look at the proposed design at 20 Fulton Street. We also received, um, we have written testimony from, a, yes? It's a, It's, I, it, I think it's fine. This is written testimony, uh, and if, if we need to, we can reopen the record just to allow this to come in since we've received it. Uh, and um, This is on the latest scheme or the earlier scheme? It's unclear whether it's on the latest or the earlier scheme, but... That yes, uh, Gabriella. What you just recommended from the board is what I have in my file based on... Okay, the so that's all right. So this... So this is original, but, and this petition uh, is from a list of 125 people representing samples of resident stakeholders and businesses from North Heights, Fulton Ferry, Dumbo, Vinegar Hill, and uh, who support the project. So we're entering that into the record as well. Okay. Yes, we can make comments. Fred, go ahead. I want to make a comment simply because um, I'm at this location three or four times a week um, in the very early morning. I might have mentioned that before as I take a big walk down here uh, from my house. Um, um, I, I liked the scheme before, but I thought it needed um, some adjustments. I want to compliment the scheme now. I think uh, it's a terrific little building. Um, it's an unusual building and may not seem immediately appropriate uh, within context, but because of the um, uh, height limits and so forth given, um, it, it, it's restricted to this literal um, size building. So the question is, do we want to keep a wall there and have no building or a little building there, which is like a festival building, I think, and this whole part of uh, Lower Fulton, um, like it or not, is, is, a, is a festive place, uh, very uh, of, of, of festival, sort of a, a continual festival. So I think this little building, which still has a, a little bit of a temporary quality, which I think is appropriate, um, um, is a very smart building now. I think the applicant and the architect have, uh, have gone a long way to make it an extraordinarily smart building. Not all smart buildings are enjoyable, but this one I think is both a smart, very intellectually smart, but also will be a terrific um, little presence on this, uh, on this corner. So I think it's a wonderful scheme. Uh, I would agree with you, Fred, and uh, I think I commented last time as well that, uh, that, uh, that here's a real opportunity to add to a promenade that takes you to the water and connects different parts of the district. Uh, I think that to activate it from otherwise a wall is a very positive thing, and uh, I think that the applicant has been responsive in, in their design. I think now it recalls much more uh, the historic features in a, definitely in a contemporary way. It's, it's not literal at all. Um, uh, but I think in spirit, uh, it, it adds to uh, what this area is about, which is again, as Fred noted, you know, festivities, marketplace. Uh, so I think from that perspective, it, it truly is, um, I think it meets our standards of appropriateness. Uh, are there other comments? All right, good. So if there are no other comments, we can uh, move to decision. Uh, Michael, would you like to read that? Uh, Devin, sure, yes. We're going around the table in the opposite direction. In the matter of 20 Old Fulton Street in the Fulton Ferry Historic District, an application to construct a new building, I recommend approval finding that the construction of a new building on the site will not damage or destroy significant features of the site or adjacent buildings and will restore continuity to the street wall, thereby strengthening the streetscape that the proposed low scale of the new building is in keeping with one and two story commercial buildings found currently and historically within the Fulton Ferry Historic District. That because of the site's development limitations created by an easement within the neighboring property and its location in close proximity to three varied historic districts and adjacent to the recently developed Brooklyn Bridge Park, the site is well suited to an interesting new building type in a contemporary design. 
that the proposed black painted steel and exposed concrete facades will utilize building materials found within the historic district and relate well to the industrial character of the adjacent concrete wall historic buildings and the nearby Brooklyn Bridge. That the concrete base, metal parapet, and metal piers, which can be perceived through gaps in the canopy, will provide features that define the volume of the building and relate it to other buildings in the district. That the profiles of the piers and storefront framing will provide a level of articulation that evokes the 19th century buildings in this district. That the adjacent concrete wall be, will be integrated into the design of the building by continuous concrete base of the new building. That the proposed translucent glazed transom windows, awnings, and operable storefront windows will animate the streetscape and will recall the historic streetscape activity when this was a thriving commercial and industrial center. That the proposed translucent fabric awnings will recall in a contemporary fashion cloth awnings and metal canopies historically found at buildings within the district and are evocative of the district's history as an open air commercial market center. That the illuminated dimensional signage letters located behind the transom glass and vertically on the storefront columns are well integrated with the design of the facades and will not call undue attention to themselves or overwhelm the building streetscape and that the proposed excavation required for the basement level will be designed and built in compliance with DOB regulations under the supervision of a licensed professional engineer to protect the building and the adjacent buildings. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Application submitted.